but it's really the fear of life mm-hmm. or the fear of God. This is the thing titled The Fourth Obstacle the Fear of God. That goes way down under that because it seems like the mind is identified with the body and is afraid of, of dying. Really, it, it's, it's talking about uh, the third sentence. So Perga says, this is the darkest veil upheld by the belief in death and protected by its attraction. So the deceived mind is attracted to death. It doesn't, it doesn't seem, I'm attracted to death, you know, on the surface. It doesn't seem like there's an attraction to death. It seems like there's a fear of dying. But there's really an attraction to it and a fear okay. of God. And as you go back, um, this third obstacle is titled The Attraction of Death. Is it talking about death of the body? No. Oh, that's what I It's not the death of anything that is death. Right. So that's what we have to yeah, go into this very carefully. So death. there's there's the attraction of death, and then if you go back a little bit earlier, two pages earlier, mm-hmm. 386, the attraction of pain. Mm-hmm. And then if you go back a few pages earlier, page 382, the attraction of guilt. So, um, back up though. Did, did I understand you say that this is not talking about the attraction of death of the body? Right. When it's using what the word death, it means it's not talking about death of the body. What death is it talking about? Well, we, that's where we take it down in the sense that the ego is death. And the ego seems attractive to the deceived mind. In other words, the ego seems to offer something of value to it. It's taking it out of the physical realm. In other words, death of the body, which is the way I've always grown up and, and conceived of death. And now the Course is saying that if you're wrong-minded, that's okay. death. You're dying you're to attracted the... to the presence of ego. Right, because the ego is not who I am, so it's like the death of who I am if I identify with the ego, that's like death. Oh, well, wait a minute. Now, that's different again, then. What is the death actually referring to? Is it is it the presence of the ego, or is it the death of the self, the real self, or, or the refusal to see the real self? It's the attraction of the ego, in the sense that it, it gets played out on the surface, in the sense that the mind ends up seeking a lot of things to make its life better and its kingdom better, and really it's falling right into the hands of the ego. Well, which actually, yeah, it's, it's one and the same. Yeah. So that's the thing about the attraction of guilt. I mean, who here hasn't experienced pleasure? And who here hasn't went, hmm, with that experience? Whether we're talking food, all kinds of stimulation, sexual, pleasure of sunsets, pleasure of, you know, certain climates, and on and on and on. Now, if, if pleasure and pain, again, are part of the ego system, and one seems attractive, and by getting any part of the ego system, you get, you get the ego. The whole thing. You, you get the whole thing. You keep the ego. That is what we're really trying to get at here. We're talking about the attraction to death, the attraction to guilt, the attraction to pain. On the surface, it doesn't seem like that's what it is. It's so sneaky. It's like that movie last night that we watched where, you know, he's saying, have some excitement. Don't be such a stick in the mud. You know, go sailing and do this. And be alive. Be alive. Right. And, and he really said, live. and you can't do this 50%. It's yeah. 100%.
connected. <laughs> Can't have one without the other. <laughs> you know, you got to take them both. Then it's like, oh, I, I would rather have a miracle. <laughs> I'll take a miracle. Hold, order hold, hold the order. order hold the order. I'm, 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 I'm gonna. I'm choosing. I'm really changing my decision here. I'm going for the miracle. That leads out. I mean, that leads out of the out of the dream. That's a whole new menu in store for the. I'm thinking of a he said she said movie where that's such a classic. So the Burger King. But I think, Dave, one of the things, and, and, you know, I know we're going deeper here, but just at a, at a very beginner level, take the attraction to death away or the fear of death of the body, because that's what we think we are, and it changes everything right away to want to look deeper. If that, in fact, isn't real, then we really need to look at what is, because, you know, if you ask people, I'm not sure where we can go with this, but because it's just a thought, but if you ask people, would you want to live forever, they'll say no. So there's no attraction to eternity in this type of living. I mean, how much pleasure can you have well, before it gets I, boring? I have how much, that, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Some people have said that, but they see it as immortality of the body. They're seeing it as immortality of the body, right. <laughs> They do want this, and, then they, want, and they want just the Heart positive aspect, and they right. want it. Right, and they want the body not to age. And well, you know, yeah, that goes to that. I mean, saying, right. otherwise, what would be the point? So, you know, but I mean, there's you something get the to that. The pleasure would be two billion years old, but yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah, but there's something to that in where our minds are. Yes, yeah, that defining life. As it's long defining as life, life right. is defined in physical terms, then. Right. Then you have boredom and you have excitement, you know? And well, there are people, I know Deepak Chopra and a number one are talking about life extension. Yes. And there's some good there's metaphysical things. ideas in a lot of those teachings. However, when you... Ageless body, timeless mind. Right. When you get down to thinking life is of the body and wanting to extend mm -hmm. it to mm -hmm. 100, 110, 120 mm -hmm. years, again, mm -hmm. that the course goes the level above and it says, oh, you want peace of mind. Mm -hmm. You want to wake up and and remember your father. That's life. Yeah, that's yeah. life. Have it for as long as you want, but just have that. And life <laughs> after death, a lot of people will connotate with my father and I used to say, people think they're going to go having lunch with their friends after death. They got another thing coming, you know, because he doesn't believe in anything. Well, there's something much greater than that, but that's the concept of life after death. The light, and then, then my grandmother, seeing my grandmother, and seeing my kids. And again, we're back to, in the life after death, we're back into the same attractions and substitutions as we had here. Yeah. But isn't that a lot of what the Hindu thing is about? I mean, they, it's like this perfect world on the other side, where there are your, your loved ones, and, and, and everything is harmonious, but it's only possible. That's all that, that's there. It's a real, it's a real draw. That's their, their, their attachment. Yeah. Again, that would be or the paradise on earth. Jehovah Witnesses talk about, you know, 144,000 and like the Garden of Eden, which is again seem to be in form. And the course just says no. That the world was made as a defense against God. It's like the world is kind of saying you can't enter here, God. <laughs> and so that those. This really goes beyond those kind of concepts. What the Course does talk about is the real world, which you could you could think of it symbolically as once you come to the place of clarity, where you just have one box, so to speak, that we talk about, then, in a sense, everyone is there with you. Because the differences have faded, including the differences of time. I mean, it's, it's tempting through the ego lens to say, well, I'm advancing spiritually, but so-and-so, and there seems to be a time lag, and there seems to be, like, the consciousness, 2150, the book, yeah. it seems very linear and mm -hmm. spread out, or Urantia, very spread out, and the Course is just going, time collapse. Yeah. Yeah. If you come to the state of right-mindedness, then you see that, oh, that was just my misperception that evolution mm -hmm. was going this way. You know, again, Time and space have to be questioned. So you see that in right-mindedness that everyone is there. Now that's a big
very deep concept. So Jesus gives a lot of metaphors to step up to that. One of them he talks about in, in the course is charity, from, from the Bible. And he says, charity is, is like perceiving your brother as if he was much farther along in his evolution than he really appears to be in the, in the world. And Jesus says, again, you can tell that this is a time concept. Perceiving your brother as if he was much farther along than he seems to be, that still, uh, you can see there's an aspect of time in the concept of charity. Oh, but yeah. he says it's very beneficent. Because again, you can you can relate to him in a very loving way. You don't you aren't so tied into the behaviors and the attributing like, well, this this one's got a long ways to go or something. You you see past that. So that's what's so neat about the course is it gives you concepts even that can be really helpful if if the top rung just seems too you know out of reach. Wasn't a question. It was a, a total 